to worship. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, shall he not do it? Hath he spoken, shall he not make it good? Help, O Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fay among the children of men. They speak vanity. They speak vanity, everyone with their neighbor. With flattering lips, with a double heart they speak. But you, Lord, are an awesome God. Let his name be praised. Amen. Father, as we come to worship you today, I pray that your presence will be with us. Take full control over everything that will be said and done. And at the end of this day, Lord, let your name be uplifted up and be glorified. In your name I pray. Amen. We shall remain standing as we begin our service um, this morning with opening hymn number 359, 359, and the voice of Jesus.
morning, saints. The honor is mine this morning to welcome all of you to the house of the Lord. I want to give all the Plumstead members a very warm welcome. I want to welcome those who are watching online. You could have chosen to be anywhere, but you chose to worship with us today. So praise be to God. I pray that you will be very comfortable today. And I'm trusting the uh, Plumstead members will make you feel very welcome. Can I ask visitors, please, to, if you don't mind standing, so we can see who you are and just give you a proper welcome. Or if there's someone sitting next to you that you don't know or you know as a visitor, please can you introduce them to us? Anyone here? No first time visitors? Okay. Thank you very much. And can I ask what your name is and what church you're, you're coming to us from? Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Oh, we do, I do have something for you, actually. So can I ask my helpers to just give that to you? We like to give gifts here in Plumstead Church. Um, anybody else? Well, I'm going to offer you all once again and extend my welcome to, to Plumstead Church and we pray that you will all be blessed uh, this morning. Amen. Oh, there is something that we do here. Uh, it's a special welcome song and we're going to change it up today. We're going to have um, Marching to Jerusalem, if you don't mind. So this is a chance for us to greet each other for a few minutes, just to shake each other's hand and uh, see how we all are feeling this morning. We like to see smiles. Praise team when you're ready. Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. I hope and pray that you're all welcomed to the house of God. Um, so these are the announcements for this week. There will be a lunch after family worship, so please do stay for the visitors. There's a hall upstairs which you can access by the stairs or by the lift. So do stay and worship with uh, and fellowship with us. After, after family worship, the junior Sabbath school are going to be practicing for their ch the Children's Day on the 16th of March. So please, church, when you're directed to leave at the end, please do um, leave very quietly for me, please, and orderly. So after church, please leave the church quietly and quickly so th the Sabbath School Department can practice for the 16th of March. Also, just to remind you, there is power in prayer. So every Wednesday, we have prayer meeting at 7.30, it's a time for thanksgiving and to be, uh, make your request known to God. So 7.30 on a Wednesday. And not to forget, on Tuesday, it's an opportunity for us to go out into the community and give out literature um, in the community. That, and that's led by Brother Alex Momo. So Tuesday, 6 to 7. Also, 
Pathfinders. Um, we haven't had a Pathfinders Club for a while at Plumstead, but um, by God's grace, we now have a leader, um, and that's Brother Lionel Ross. Amen. Brother Lionel, can you just let, we do know you, but just in case there is anyone that doesn't know Brother Lionel, if you could just stand up. And, and so Brother Lionel is asking for anyone who's interested in joining the Pathfinder Club, please see him. We do need volunteers to support the club and get it running again. So those are my announcements for this week. Thank you very much, church, and God bless. Thank you very much, Sister Angela, for that announcement. We are so grateful for you coming Sabbath after Sabbath and updating us about events and activities. We are so grateful. Thank you. It has become a custom in Plumstead now that um, each month, I mean, each month, the last Sabbath of each month, Last Sabbath of each month, we join with those who have celebrated their birthdays in a month. Today is the last Sabbath of February, right? So we have to join with those who are celebrating their birthdays in February. I'm not sure about January. I wasn't here, was it? Did we do It was done. Okay, so then may I call all those who are celebrating their birthdays in February to join with us here, right here. Come forward so we will pray with you. You know, remember that it is always good and we need to thank God for the gift of life that he has given us. Sometimes we are always quick in asking and asking and we forget sometimes to say thank you. So those who are celebrating their birthdays in February, please come forward so we can pray with you. It is always good to say thank you to the Lord for the gift of life that he's given us and also renew our commitment to work with him throughout our life journey. So these are the beautiful ones um, celebrating their birthdays in February. The handsome one and the beautiful ones. We are so happy to join with you to celebrate your birthday and say thank you for the gift of life that the Lord has given you and has given all of us. We wish you a happy birthday and we pray that the Lord will continue to bless you and bless your household. And also reaffirm your commitment to work with him throughout your life until time is no more. Until he comes and takes his children home. We have a baby celebrating the first birthday. Amen? First birthday. Okay. At this time, I'm going to pray for you. And then after that, the church will join in so we can sing beautiful happy birthday for you. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we are so grateful this morning for the privilege that you've given us to come into your house to worship you and to praise you and to glorify your name. Heavenly Father, we say thank you for everything that you've done for us. Thank you for everything that you have done for us throughout our life journey. Father, we are here this morning to say thank you for the gift of life that you have given us. Father, we are saying thank you for those who are celebrating their birthday in February. Heavenly Father, we pray, oh God, that you will bless them in a special way as never before. We pray that, Lord, you will multiply unto their years many, many more years to come. So that, Lord, they will continue to come and say, thank you, Lord, for the gift of life that you have given them. Heavenly Father, we pray, O oh God, that you will be with them 
in their life journey. Father, we pray that you will bless them in a special way so that nothing um, um, bad will come their way. We pray that you allow your holy angels that excel in strength, Father, to um, cover them at all times so that no harm will come their way. Heavenly Father, in a special way, O oh Lord, we pray that you allow your presence to be with them because they cannot live without your presence, Lord. We pray that may your presence continue to be with them wherever they go and in everything that they do. And also, Father, they are expressing their desire to work with you throughout their life journey until you come and take them home. In a special way, we are committing the baby, our baby who is celebrating her birthday for the first, her first birthday into your hands, O oh Lord. We pray that, Lord, you will allow your holy angels that excel in strength to protect her in a special way, to be with her so that, Lord, year after year, she will come into your house to say thank you for the gift of life that you've given her. And so we thank you for hearing our prayers this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now may everyone stand up as we sing happy birthday for the beautiful ones. Happy birthday to you. Lord bless you. Lord Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. Happy birthday to you. Amen. May you be blessed. Please sit down. It is time for our children's story. So may I ask, is Sister Pauline here? May I ask all the children to come forward for a special children's story this morning to be given to us by Sister Pauline. All the children, please come forward. Happy Sabbath, children. Ooh. Did we have breakfast? Yes? Or should I talk to mummies and daddies? Happy Sabbath, mummies and daddies. There's no way that mummies and daddies would have had breakfast and we didn't have breakfast. So let's try again. Happy Sabbath, children. Happy Sabbath. That's a lot better. Well done. So today, I'm going to tell you a story about a guy on a bike. A guy on a bike transforms 20,000 lives. Can somebody count till 20,000 here? Is there anybody who can count? Okay, all right, so everybody can count. Is there anybody who has a bike here? All right, looks like everybody has a bike. So... My story says, a guy on a bike transforms 20,000 lives. What do you think the story is about? You have a bike. Have you transformed 20,000 lives? Do you know what I mean by transform? Yes. He changed them. He changed them. Whatever he did, changed their lives. Yes. So, can you help me tell the story? Can you... Can you just try and imagine. What do you think he would have done? What would he have done? Would you know? 
Do you know? Yeah. You wouldn't have ride the bike and then got too old. <laughs> so he rode his bike and got too old. Yeah? Okay, well, good guess. Good guess. Not quite right. So I guess I'm going to have to tell the story myself. All right? But I still need helpers. Can I get two boys? Two boys. Come, come, come. Thank you. I need one more. Come. All right. So I have two boys. Now, the, the, the guys are actually men. But so my boys here are going to represent the men. There are two men. One is called Tom and one is called Philip. Who is this? Tom. And who is this? Philip. Okay. So I'll tell you about Tom first. So Tom um, had a wife and 11 children. Now he lived in a farm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 11 children. But this was many years back. Many years back. Now, unfortunately, his wife got sick. She got pneumonia, and um, she died, and left him with the 11 children. But before she died, she told him, um, she asked him to promise her that he would help the children to make sure, he would make sure that he and the children get to heaven. Now, that was quite a tall asking for him because he didn't know what to do. But nonetheless, he promised that he would do that. Now... Let's go to, who is this? Philip. So now I'm going to tell you about Philip. Now Philip, also born many, many years back, but he was born in Scotland. Now in Scotland, he also unfortunately went through different tra tragedies and he decided that he would go. Tom lived in Australia. And remember, Philip was born in Scotland. So after this mishaps happened in his life, he decided, no, I want a new life. So I'm going to go to Australia because I want to start a new, I want to start afresh. And so here was Philip on his journey to Australia. And along the way, he came across Christian literature that um, helped him find the truth and know the Jesus of Nazareth. And not only did he find a new country, but he also got a new life. All right? So now, how do these two people come to get to know each other? So Philip, having given his life to Christ and discovered that this was just the best thing that could ever happen to him, decided to give up his job as an engraver. Do you know who an engraver is? An engraver is somebody who uh, cuts out or carves out text or images on things. It could be wooden or anything that could be cut out or carved on. So that's what he did. And so he decided to stop his job as an engraver and he decided he wanted to do what? He wanted to engrave the word of God in people's hearts. And how would he do that? He would do that by going about sharing the gospel and giving literature just as he found Jesus through literature. So he decided that's what he was going to do. He was not going to keep the good news to himself, but he was going to go around and give people literature. So this is where the bike comes in. So Philip, on your bike, what do you decide to do? You decide to get onto your bike with the literature at the back and ride around the countryside sharing the gospel with people. So now Philip meets Tom. At the time that he meets Tom, Tom was, he was a strong man, of course, tilling his land, but he was broken in spirit. Why? He had lost his wife, and he had 11 children, and he was supposed to make sure they got to heaven. How? He did not know. But when Philip listened to his story, Philip decided, I mean, knew he had a solution for Tom. So what did he do? He gave him literature, and specifically the book, The Great Controversy. So... Tom got to study. It was difficult to understand, but with persistence, he got to understand and he discovered that this is exactly what he needed. This is the exact solution that he needed that would help him to fulfill his promise to his wife. So Tom accepted the gospel. He accepted Jesus Christ. And because he decided that this was too good to keep to himself, what did he do? 
he shared the message with his children. How many children did he have? He had 11 children. So he shared the message with his 11 children and five neighbors who also had children. So this story happened way back in the 1800s. So you can imagine from the 1800s to now, how many other people these children and families shared the gospel with. So many people, actually more than 20,000 if we counted. Now the question is, do you think you too can transform lives? Can you make a difference in other people's lives? Can you? Can you share the gospel with others? Or should I rephrase, do you share the gospel with others? In your school, do you tell your, your friends about Jesus Christ? Do you? Is there anybody who tells their friends about Jesus Christ? You do? Well done. Well done. Is there anybody else? Or do we think it's only Brother Alex's job and mommies and daddies to share the gospel with others? We come to Sabbath school and we enjoy the stories, isn't it? So we too can tell others about Jesus. I'm sure you know that Children's Day is coming up. Are you going to invite your friends to come? No? Okay. So I would like to encourage you to invite your friends to come. But not only that, I would like you to share the stories of Jesus with your friends too, so that they too can know about Jesus. Now, in the South England Conference, I believe the theme is inspired for mission. And not only that, the Bible tells us that we need to go, therefore, and spread the gospel to all the world. And so that means that everybody has a responsibility to share the gospel with others. And whereas I may share the gospel with other ladies or women or people my age, I can share the gospel with you. But I can also, you can share the gospel with your friends. You can tell them about Jesus. Better still, you can tell them about the stories that you are learning. Yes, you are still growing and learning, but you can share with them the stories that you enjoy. Okay? So I'm going to give you a challenge. And the challenge is I'm going to give you a pamphlet. All right? And it has a story that you can share with your friends. And that can be the beginning. Okay? So when you run out of these, I'll give you one, and you can share this with your friends in school. Because, remember, we are telling people who don't know about Jesus. Yeah? We're telling them about Jesus. We're telling them that he loves us, and he died for us, and he's coming back for us. And he's going to come back very soon. Do you want to go to heaven by yourself? <laughs> Don't you want to take others with you? Yes. It would be nice if we all went to heaven. So it's important to share with our friends and our families. Okay? So, my helpers, can you make sure that everybody gets one of these? As we are giving this out, is there anybody who'd like to pray for us? Is there anybody who'd like to pray? But before we pray, can I ask the question, what have we learned from the story? To, le to share the gospel to, to other people who don't know the gospel of God. Amen. Amen. Okay. So I trust that you're going to do just that and that you're also going to invite your friends to come for Children's Day, that they too can get to know more about Jesus. All right? Okay. Oops, our pamphlets are falling. So I'm going to invite Pastor Cindy to pray for our children. It's not easy, as we have seen. They have said, um, it's, it's difficult. And it's difficult for adults too, because I know when Brother Alex invites us to come and go and share, not many people show up. So... Pastor Cindy, please pray for all of us to be able to share the gospel with others. Let us pray. 
Dear God in heaven, we're so grateful to be called by your name, to be called your children, both young and old. We are grateful that we can call you our father. We are grateful that we can call you a friend and a brother. Yet we know you are the king of kings and lord of lords. We thank you for the life you have blessed us with. Some of us are only three years old right now. Yeah. But Lord, we know that those three years could have been cut short if the enemy had his way. So Lord, we thank you for each and every life in this room and online today. And I pray, dear Father, that all of us, young and old, Father, will be inspired to share your gospel. I pray for these little children, dear Lord, that you will build a hedge of protection around them, that you will protect their health. You will protect them even when they go to school or nursery, dear Lord, that no bully will find them attractive. I pray, dear Father, that they will find favor with all the other children and with the teachers, dear Father. I pray for their play. I pray for their future, dear Lord, that it will be pride. That amongst these children right now that came for the story, dear Lord, we will get professionals. We will get preachers. We will get your children who will work according to your will. So I pray, oh God, that as you protect them, help us as adults to lead them in the right way. I pray, dear Lord, that we will not be an hindrance in what you have called them to be. But Lord, as per the lesson today, I pray that they will not grow to share the gospel, but they will start now. As they do, we pray, dear Lord, that we too as adults will be the inspired to do the same. In Jesus' name, amen. So you can come now or later for your pamphlets to share, okay? Thank you so much, Sister Pauline, for that children's story, for encouraging our children, inspiring our children to share the word of God with others. And we are also happy with that family, 11, fami 11 children in the family, which is a football team on its own. At this time, it is time for our tithes and offerings. And when it comes to our tithe and offering, what comes to mind first is Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. That is what comes to mind when we talk about tithe and offering. And Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. Test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until there is no more room to receive it. If I will not pour out a blessing unto you until there is no more room, until there is no more room to receive it. That is Malachi chapter 3. Verse 10. And as we ponder upon these words, I will encourage you to give according to what the Lord has given you. And also, please remember to give the combined budget offering so that we'll be able to maintain all our equipments and maintain your, the house of worship. Also, at this time, I will ask the deacons to stand with me as we pray for the tithe and offering. But before we pray, may I also remind you that you use seven me 
up to um, return your tithe and offering. That is the way forward when it comes to tithe and offering. And so we have to be conversant with it now because very soon the basket will not go around and we will only be using the app to give our tithe and offering. We are in a ca cashless, um, cashless society. And as you are aware, the banks very soon will not be taking cash. And so, please use your Seven Me app, activate it now. And also, if you have any issue with your Seven Me app, please come and see me or come and see any, any of the elders or the Treasury Department and we'll sit down with you, help you to set up the app, and you'll be up and running. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, once more, Lord, we have come with our tithe and offering. You said that if we text you in this, you pour out a blessing unto us that there will be no more room to receive it. Lord, this is your word that you have spoken. And because your word is always true, Lord, your children are about to give their tithe and offering. We pray, O oh God, that you pour out your blessings upon them that there will be no more room to receive it. And so, Lord, we pray as we give, as we give faithfully to your cause. We pray that, Lord, you will bless the offering that we are about to give and you will multiply it, O oh Lord, so that it will go a long way to further your cause and hasten your soon coming. And so we thank you for the privilege to give faithfully to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
morning. Oh, good afternoon, church. <laughs> uh, it's come to the point in our worship where we can um, all come to the throne of grace and talk to our maker. So can we all stand, please? We're going to stand today and we're going to bow our heads in prayer. I don't know if anyone has a specific prayer that they want to come forward and talk to the Lord about. Please, if you have such a, a prayer that you need to um, emphasize to God, please come forward. here again, dear Father in heaven. We're here again to call upon your name. We are here again in this place, this place which is holy, to petition you this morning, but not, not only to petition you, dear Lord, but to give you thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We have come physically to this building, but there are those who are online who are joining us at this moment in time to petition you also. And we give thanks and we give praise to you, Lord, that you are a prayer-answering God. Dear Father, there are three individuals who have come forward because they have special requests to be made known to you. I'm sure, dear Father, they have been talking to you about it before. But right now, dear Father, they're taking this opportunity to come before you in the sanctuary to make known their request. So you can read hearts, dear Father, and you know why they're there why they're here. And for those of us who have not come forward, for whatever reason, they also have their petitions, dear Lord. And we're asking that you be faithful to your word because Jesus has told us that if we ask anything of you, Father, you will do it. So with this confidence, we come. We praise you that you are a good God and that you know what's best for us. So dear Lord, this morning as your congregation, here and online, Lord, we're asking that you will hear us and that you will bless us. Father, there are some of us who need healing. There are some of us who need to grow spiritually. And dear Lord, we're asking you to answer these prayers for us. Their financial um, requests, there are job requests, their relationship requests. Dear Father in heaven, hear our prayers this morning, I pray. Dear Lord, we will not just be selfish because we are called as a people, we are a called out people to make known your word, your word that you are God and there is no other, and that you're coming again soon to claim your people who have called upon you, who are redeemed, who have given their hearts and their lives to you. Dear Father, you're coming back for a people who will be ready. May we indeed do all we can to be ready to meet Jesus when he comes. So Father in heaven, we pray for our community, the community that we worship in, the community of Plumstead. Dear Lord, we're asking that you will be with these people and that they will see the signs on the building, but more than anything else, they will see the signs of every one of us that we are akin to you, that we are related to you, dear Father, 
that we, O oh Lord, worship you. That's what we do here every week. Father in heaven, I pray that somehow we will touch those we come in contact with and that they will get to know you better. Father, we pray for the government, the government of this land. Your word encourages us that we should pray for our leaders, the leaders of the countries that we reside in. And so, Father, we are asking that, dear Father, the laws that they will make will not be oppressive laws to oppress your people. Dear Father in heaven, we pray that they too will come to know you, whom to know is life eternal. Dear Lord, we pray for the people in Gaza. Oh Lord, you see the suffering there. And it's not just Gaza, Lord, but Israel. It's not just Israel and Gaza, Lord, but wherever there's turmoil, we're asking you, Father, that you will put in your appearance. And we know that your word said that there'll be wars and rumors of war until you come, dear Lord. But dear Father, protect your people. Protect the innocent from the ravages that Satan will send our way. Father in heaven, we want to give thanks for hearing this prayer. But we also want to pray for your um, servant who will step forward in a moment or two to present your word to us today, Pastor Barrett. I pray, dear Father, that your Holy Spirit will rain down in this place and more than anything, Lord, rain down upon Pastor Barrett that she will give the message that you have for us today and may we receive it with all humility and apply it to our lives because you know that this is what should happen today. Bless us, I pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. seated. I have the privilege um, this afternoon to introduce the platform party. Um, on my stream left is Saldrina, one of the elders who presented that prayer of faith to us and petition on our behalf to the Lord. And then we have Brother Jonas who gave us a warm welcome this morning. And then I will jump over and come to my stream right, um, Elder Chitemi, who gave us the call to worship this morning. And also, um, Sister Pauline Okelo, um, who gave us the children story this morning. I am your servant, one of the elders of this church, presiding over today's service. Sister Angela, also not forgot, forgotten Sister Angela, she gave us the announcement this morning. And I will, I would um, at this time invite Pastor Cindy to come and introduce the speaker of the hour. After that introduction, um, may I ask Sister um, Quinn to get ready to give us a song of meditation. After the song of meditation, the only voice you will hear that will be our speaker. But this time, may I invite Pastor Cindy to introduce the speaker to us. Amen. Amen. 
Thank you, Elsa. Thank you. Happy Sabbath, blessed Sabbath, Plumstead Church. Oh, I get it. Sorry. Uh, royal greetings, children of the Most High King. Amen. Amen. We are more than blessed. You know, there's always a, something special for royals. They don't just have breakfast. All their breakfast is special. Their lunch is special. And all our Sabbaths are special here. And even today, we have a special guest who has come, I am confident, with a word from above. Amen. Not only from a preparation. This is one of our ah, amazing speakers. Let me prepare you. <laughs> speakers that we have. She actually uh, still serves as one of our pastors in uh, London. She pastors Clapton Church. But mm -mm, don't think that's all. She also comes to us from South England Conference where she serves as our community director. Amen. Now we know who to contact. Uh, amen. So, um, Pastor, I don't just want to introduce you to the church, but to introduce Plumster Church to you. These are children of the Most High King. So when you go back to the SEC, tell them you've met royalty. And when you work, when you make plans, you're in your uh, directorship, please think of us with favor. We are a church that would love to serve its community too. Amen. And my prayer is that we will make her feel welcome, not only that, but that we will receive her sermon as a word from the Lord. Amen. Children of God, be blessed. Before Sister Quinn comes to give that song of meditation, may I apologize? Um, we have our former pastor, Pastor Williams, in the house worshiping with us. Pastor Williams, you can just wave your hand so everyone can see you. That is our former pastor who has pastored this church for quite some time. And Pastor, we are happy to have you, and may you continue to come and worship with, with us when you have time. May God bless you. At this time, Song of Meditation. Happy South Francis Church. Um, I want to say to our, our visiting pastor that indeed, Plumstead is a royal church. <laughs> As you've heard, Sister Queen and uh, I'm going to invite King David. That's my husband. His name is David. And uh, Princess, my daughter, to come and join sing with me. So that's royalty in Plumstead. <laughs> I believe since we are all here, there isn't any other place we would have wanted to be than being at the seat of Jesus. Amen. I hope you'll be blessed by this song. Oh, 
I'd rather use this one. Thank you. So, Royal Plumstead. So I need some royal greetings. I don't need this one. I need the one that is more lively, that tells me that you're a, a live church and a church that loves to praise the Lord. That's what I was told. I was told that Clapton is a, I mean, Plumstead. Plumstead is a hallelujah, amen, praise the Lord church. So just to see, Pastor Cindy, if that is true, if what I've been told is true, I just want to try something um, this afternoon to kind of warm up Plumstead. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of cold. You know, the building is kind of cold, so I'll try something. So if you're happy and you know it, say amen. Amen. Wow. I don't even gonna need to go any further, man. <laughs> Plumstead is happy. <laughs> if you're happy and you know it, say praise the Lord. And if you're really happy and you know it, say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And if you're really, really, really happy and you know it, say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, man. I mean, Plum said he's happy. So it's so good to be here with you today. And I'm so grateful and thankful for the invitation um, from your pastor. I think it was the pre previous pastor, Pastor Ab 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 Abib. Yes, who, sent, who, who made sure he booked me from last year, December. You know, so I, um, so I couldn't say no because it was so early. <laughs> and my diary wasn't even started fully up, but now it's fully up and it's kind of full up. You know, so he booked me from then and I'm grateful and thankful to be here. I, take, I bring you greetings from the South England Conference. I don't know why we do that, but yes, I bring you greetings. <laughs> Just let the president know I did say hello, that he said hello. <laughs> you know, just to make sure that, you know, you, you tell the president that I said he said hello. You know, so I bring you greetings from the South England Conference in the capacity of the community ministry director for the South England Conference. Thank you, Pastor Cindy, for such a um, warm uh, introduction. She was asking me, what else can I say about you? I said to her, there's nothing more to say. <laughs> um... I am just who I am. What you see is what you get. There's no air and grace. I am not one of those pretentious persons um, that pretend to be what I'm not. I'm just this down to earth person. So if you see me on the street, you'll see me in jeans and t-shirt. You won't see me in a three-piece suit. I'm in a three-piece suit today because I'm at church. <laughs> but apart from that, you won't. You're probably thinking, is that really Pastor Barrett? And I go, yeah, 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 it's me. You know, but it's good to be here. It's good to be here. So this morning, um, if you have your Bibles with you, I think this afternoon, if you have your Bibles with you, just turn with me to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 5, and it's a well-known Bible passage, and we're going to repeat it together because I don't think I need to read it. And preferably, if you have the New King James Version, or if they can put it on the screen, we will just read it together. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Have we found it? If you have it, say amen. amen. And it says, read together after three. One, two, three. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Father in heaven, we are just here today to worship you. And so, Lord, as I stand before your people, the words are not mine, but they are yours. Whatever I do, Father, let it be done for your name's glory, honor, and praise. I pray that you will use me now for your name's honor and glory. In your name I pray. Amen. So the title of the sermon this afternoon is entitled, Be the Light. Be the Light. So light is both obvious and mysterious. We're bathed in yellow warmth every day and water of the darkness will fluorescent bulbs every evening. 
And right now we have the fluorescent bulbs, you know, lighting up this church. But what exactly is light? We catch a glimpse of its nature when a sunbeam angles through a dust-filled room, when a rainbow appears after a storm, or when a drinking straw in a glass of water looks disjointed. These glimpses, however, only lead to more questions. Does light travel as wave, a ray, or a stream of, of particles? It is, a, is it a single color or many colors mixed together? Does it have a frequency like sound? You might think scientists, scientists know all the answers, but light continues to surprise them. Some of the brightest minds in history of science have focused their powerful intellect on the subject. Albert Einstein, for instance, tried to imagine what it would be like to ride on a beam of light. What if one were to run after a ray of light, he said, he asked. What if one were riding on a beam? If one were to run fast enough, would it no longer move at all? But what is light? You see, according to the Collins Dictionary, light is a radiant energy, usually referring to, in, to, to electromagnetic radiation that is visible to the human eye and is responsible for the sense of sight. But here's the thing. Scientists might be baffled about how light works, but the God who created the universe knew what he was doing when he created light. He knew how important it was going to be to humanity, and so you read in the creation story, you will find that light was the first thing that God created. So when you read Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, it said, then God said what? Let there be what? Light, and there was light. So in the Old Testament, you will find that it, you will find that it, it, is, it is rich in its many uses of light as a metaphor for spiritual illumination and life. Psalms 27, verse 1 said, the Lord is my what? Light and salvation, whom shall I fear? And Psalms 119, 105 said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Isaiah 60, verse 19 said, Isaiah promised us that Israel, that the coming age of the Lord himself will be their everlasting light. And Isaiah 42 verse 16 said, I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know, in parts they have not known. I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level grounds. And Psalms 119, 130, the unfolding of your words gives light. It, is, it, it, it imparts understanding to the simple. So it was no coincidence to me then that Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount uses light to describe what is required of us. It was a sermon that details how we should live and behave. It was a sermon detailing the Christian lifestyle. But one thing I like about Jesus, Jesus just, not, just does not tell us to do something for which he does not lead by example. So in John 18, chapter, so John 8, chapter 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. When you read this, it could mean one or two things. It could mean, number one, it, could, it can mean either the light that, that, that which issues from the source of life or the light that gives light. But when it comes to Jesus, it means both. You see, in this passage, it means more. Jesus is the very light of God. Come among men. He is the light which gives men life. Jesus, just as the flowers cannot blossom if they, if, they, if they do not see the sunlight, so our lives can never ever flower with the grace and beauty of uh, uh, the auto until we are radiating with the life of Jesus, with the light of Jesus Christ. But Jesus didn't just say that he was the light. 
He also demonstrated how he or how he was the light. So throughout his ministry, the Bible says that he went about preaching, teaching, healing. So when you read the gospel, some of the things that Jesus did is well documented. He cleansed the leper, gave sight to the blind, raised the dead, fed the hungry, preached the gospel, cast out demons, calmed the storm, and died on a cross. You see, so as the light of the world, Jesus is exclusively the source of spiritual light. No other source of spiritual truth is available to mankind except Jesus Christ. So there are two types of light in this world. We can perceive one or both or neither. You see, when we are born in this world, we perceive the physical light, and by it we learn of our creators and the work in the things we see. However, although that light is good, there is another light, a light so important that the Son of God has to come down in order to both declare it and impart it to us. Therefore, when Jesus says that he is the light of the world, it simply means that he is the light of truth, the light of the world, and the light of eternal life. Those who perceive the true light will never walk in spiritual darkness. So those of us who perceive Jesus as the light and know Jesus as the light can never, ever walk in darkness. So when Jesus said that we are the light of the world, he knew what he was saying. He wasn't telling us to do, or he wasn't telling us to be something that we cannot be. Because the moment we decided, Pastor Cindy, to follow Christ, we are to be his light. We cannot be a Christian and do the opposite to what Christ did. Jesus does not demand that we produce our own light. We must shine with the reflection of his light. Amen. And if we haven't got the light of Christ in us, whose light are we shining? Who are we following? What are we doing? So, Jesus, you know, so when Jesus said we are the light, it simply means that we are his light. We are to shine his light. So in other words, you know, Jesus just does not demand that we produce. He doesn't demand it. Jesus can't say, well, produce your own light. He knows that we are not the creator. And so the creator said, let there be light. And then the creator came back and said, I am the light of the world. That means that I need to follow Jesus, who is the light of the world. So when I follow Christ, who is the light of the world, then I will reflect Christ's light in me. Shine from us should be a result of the presence of Christ within our hearts. So when Jesus said that we should be the light of the world, what did he mean? And I often ask myself the question, what does that look like? You see, a light is first and foremost something which meant to be seen. I am sure that no matter what you do, you cannot hide these lights in here. You could draw the curtains, you could do all that you can, but you still can. Somehow, these lights is going to shine through. You will still know that you left the light on in the building because people will see it and say, you know what? The church is closed, but the light is still on. So you cannot hide light. So light is first and foremost is to be seen. It cannot hide. So then being a Christian is something that is meant to be seen. As someone, <laughs> you know, I think, I think this was... Um, as someone has said, there can be no such thing as a secret discipleship. For either the secrecy destroys the discipleship or the discipleship destroys the secrecy. And many of us in here are playing secret disciples. Many of us are sitting in this church today playing Mission Impossible. Whereby you come in this today with one face on and you go out with another face. You go to work with one face and you come to church with one of the evilest faces you could ever see. You can't smile, you can't talk, you can't do anything. And you claim that you're following Christ the light. There's no such thing as a secret discipleship. So in other words, our Christianity should be visible for all to see. 
You see, we are Christ's hands and feet, eyes and ears. And if we hide what Christ has given to us and what he has done for us, how will the world know that there is a loving Savior who, who, who died for them? How will they know? If we as light do not tell them. That's why Jesus makes it clear that we are the light of the world. And he just did not just say that we are the light of Plumstead or wherever we may live. He said we are the light of the world. That means anywhere that we go in the world, we need to let our light shine. When Jesus said we are the light of the world, in other words, we are his instruments. And we must be played to his tune. But many of us become Christ's light and we decided we are going to dictate to God how we work for him. We are going to tell him, no, I can't do this, but I will do this. No, I can't come to church, but I will stay in my bed and watch TV. I'm not throwing any words. You see, we cannot be a follower of Christ and dictate and tell him how we want to operate. You see, some of us don't even want people to know that we are Christians because we are afraid of what they will say or how they will uh, behave towards us. But Jesus makes it clear that if we do not confess him before men, he will not confess us before his father. And can you imagine, all your life you've been serving Christ, but you're a secret disciple. And so when Christ comes, and you ready for him to confess you before his father look at you and said, I know you not. And then you go away and you're thinking, but why didn't I, didn't I do this? Didn't I do that? But no, you didn't. You refuse to confess him before men. And so Jesus is saying, if you refuse to confess me before men, I will not confess you before my father. So the reason why most of us are here today is because we have accepted Christ of our personal Savior from sin. And the moment we accept Jesus, we have to agree, and we have agreed to his term. And his terms are simple. All he asks us to do is to confess him before men and let our light shine. But how do we let our light shine? You see, we cannot do it of ourselves. First, we must allow the ultimate light, which is Jesus Christ, to illuminate our heart and mind. We need to allow Jesus to come in and take full control of our heart. We need to surrender to him daily and ask him like David to create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. You see, when Christ comes into our hearts, he, the, the bad habits will go, criticizing will stop, unforgiveness will cease. When we allow Christ in our heart, the ult, when we allow Jesus, the ultimate light to come into our heart, then and only then we will be able to be the light of the world. You see, being a Christian... It's not a one-off thing. You know, some of us are Christian today, and tomorrow, we're no Christian. But being a Christian is not a one-off thing. It's, a, it's continuous. It is not a church thing. It is an everyday living experience with Jesus. You are the light of the world, and as the light, we need to shine in our homes, we, you know, in our workplace, school, colleges, universities. We need to let our light shine so that, people, so that the people that we come in contact with day after day know that there is a God and he's coming back soon. We need to let our light shine so that someone who have no hope will know that there is hope in Jesus Christ. We need to let our light shine so that the drug addict will know that Jesus can free him or her from a life of bondage. We need to let our light shine so that the captive will know that Jesus can set them free. So Jesus said that we are the light of the world and we live in the world. So therefore, our Christianity should be evident for all to see. Our Christianity should be visible. 
in the way we treat a shop assistant across the counter, in the way we order a meal in a restaurant, in the way we treat our employees or serve our employer, in the languages we speak, the books we read, and the things that we watch on television. Our light should be shining through those things. And let me put one in there that I didn't put here. Our light should shine in the way that we treat each other when we come to church. Amen. Have you ever noticed when we come to church, we just, have, <laughs> we just bark at each other. But outside in our workplace, we treat each other with respect and love. But when we come to church, we behave all sorts of ways and, 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 and expect other people to just accept it. Because that's where they are, that's how they are. No. The moment that you decided to follow Christ, you decided to give him your life. And so therefore you need to live as Christ would have you to live. And how Christ would have us to live is for us to treat it with each other with love and respect. You see, when we see, you know, that's how Christ, you know, so just as how a candle into a room, you know, just as how we take a candle into a room to dispel the darkness, likewise the light of Jesus Christ has to be taken into the darkness of sin that engulf the heart and lives of those who are not following him. You see, the condition behind having this light is that we follow Jesus. So if we do not follow him, we will not have the light of, the, we will not have the light, the truth, or eternal life. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. You see, as true followers of Christ, we will, we, 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 we will never follow the ways of sin, never live in a state of continually sinning. Rather, we repent of our sins in order to stay close to the light, which is Jesus Christ. So, so just as the moon has no light of its own, reflecting the light of the sun, so are we to reflect the light of Christ so that, he, you know, so that all can see it and see Christ in us. You cannot hide light. That's why the Bible said you cannot put your light under a bushel. Because as much as you might put it under there, it's going to shine through. And if we are Christ's light, we need to shine through in everything that we do. Whether we have trials or tribulations, we need to shine through them so that those who don't know Christ will want to know him by the life that we live and the things that we do. We need to be the light. So the emphasis here is maintaining a credible an obvious weakness in the world, a weakness that shows us to be faithful, God-honoring, trustworthy, sincere, earnest, and honest in all that we do. We should always be ready to give an account of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. For the gospel light we have is not to be covered, but made obvious for all to see and benefit from. That they too, that the sinners that we call sinners, the people who don't know Christ, that they too may leave the darkness and come into the light. You see, God has called us to carry the light in the darkness of this world. He called us to be change agents. He wants us to shine his light so that men can see it and be changed by it. You know, many a times, you know, when I was growing up, I always hear my parents say, actions speak louder than words. And some of us say that we love Christ, but our actions don't show it. Some of us say that we are Christians, and our friends and colleagues are wondering if that's true. So I don't know about you, but I get so tired, Pastor Cindy, I get so tired of seeing or hearing people who profess to be Christians, but you will never know it by their behavior. And that's not, the, that, and that's not how it's supposed to be. We shouldn't have to say, look, I am light. 
Because right now I'm looking at the light and the light doesn't say, look, I am light. I know it's light because it's light. So as a Christian, I shouldn't have to be looking at people and people have to say, oh, you're a Christian, but you're just going to, you know, but you're even afraid to say, yes, I am, because the way you just behave. So we shouldn't have to say, look, I am light. You see, our actions should prove that we are light. Lights don't have to define themselves. All they have to do is to be what they're supposed to be, light. And that's all we need to be, light. We need to be light for Christ. We need to be the light that Jesus has called us to be. So Jesus told his followers in Luke eleven thirty six, 36, if you are filled with, the, with light, with no dark corners, then your whole life will be radiant as though a floodlight is shining on you. I remember when I was growing up, we had this prayer warrior in our church. And I'm telling you, that was one of the most beautiful lady you could ever see. The moment you see her, you knew that she was a Christian. She didn't have to tell me that she was. And I always liked to look at her. She had this humble exterior. She would just looked so humble. So I, when you talk to her, oh man, you see the love of God emanating from this woman. And I remember I used to say, I want to I wanna be able to pray like her. Because of, because of how the way she was. I want to be able to pray like her. And today, I, I don't know if I can pray like her. But I do pray and ask the Lord that I will at least be that humble, humble like how she was humble. That's the light. You don't need to look at, you, don't, you know, you shouldn't be looking at people and thinking, boy, I wonder if they're Christian. They look like Christian, but I don't know. But, you know, but they, you know, but they did something last week. And I'm, I'm yeah, you know, I, I really don't know. That shouldn't be. As Christians, people should be able to see us for who we are. As light, as the light of Christ, we need to be light. Light don't define themselves. The, the, the light just now didn't look at me and say, Pastor, I'm light. The light, you know, I know it was light because of what it does. It, this doing its work is light up the place. You turn this light off and you will realize that you're in darkness. So we have a world out there who is in darkness. And we are sitting here as God's light. But we are refusing to shine in the darkness because we don't want people to know that we are light. But when we allow Christ in, and when we decided to get rid of our pride and get rid of our backbiting and criticizing and when we decided that we're going to forgive as God has forgiven us, then Christ will be able to enter into our hearts and he will uh, shine his light in us and we will become the floodlights that we need to be for him. You see, when we accept Christ and allow him into our life, we cannot and we should not be the same. There must be a change. And Ephesians 5 verse 8 to 9 said, For you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk, is said as what? Children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth. What I just said is what Ephesians is saying, and I'm just backing it up with scripture so you know I'm not lying. So Ephesians says we need to be light. We need to come out of the darkness and step into the light. And he said we not, not only need to be light, but we must what? Walk as children of light. For the light consists of what? All goodness and righteousness. So as the light of Christ. So as the light of Christ. Are we walking and living the life that will draw someone to Christ? You know, Ephesians 2 verse 10 said, For we are what? His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. And if we are God's workmanship, are we letting our light shine? You see, as light, 
We need to invite others to come and see a man who has told us everything that we have done. A man who, in spite of what we have done uh, and where we have been, loves us so much so that he gave his own life so that we can have life. You see, as light, we need to shine in the darkness of this world and illuminate it so that, so, so that others can see a path to Christ. As light, we need to rescue the perishing, care for the dying, snatch them from pity and sin and the grave. We need to weep for the erring one and lift up the fallen and tell them that Jesus is mighty to save. We need to invite we need to invite our neighbors, friends, and family to come and see a man who can turn their despair into joy, a man who can turn their ashes into beauty, a man who can take their broken, tattered lives and put it back together again. That's what light does. So as light, we need to invite them to come and see a man who can break their chain of addiction, guilt, and shame. We need to invite them to come and see a man who can turn their life around. Are you that light today? You see, as light, we need to live in a way that our light so shine that others may see it and, uh, 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 see it and, uh, 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 and illuminate their minds and their lives. We need to use the light that God has given to us, which is Jesus Christ, and ask him to come in and illuminate us from the inside out so that we radiate with the beauty of God. So that when others see us, they will not see me, but they will see Christ Jesus living in me. The Bible said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. What, are, what kind of good works are you doing for others to see and glorify your Father which is in heaven? What has God done for you that you are not sharing with others? Have you allowed the light of Christ to come in? Christ the light, not even the light of Christ. Have you allowed Christ the light to come in and illuminate your life so that you can shine for him? You see, I don't know about you, but this is 2024. And there needs to be a change. Every Sabbath we come to church, and we do the same thing. We hear the same sermons. And you probably said, I heard that last week. But has it changed you to be the person that you need to be? Jesus said, let your light so shine before men. Is your light shining before men? Is it shining before your brothers and sisters? Is it shining in this little neighborhood that you are? The sun said, brighten the corner where you are? Are you brightening your corners where you are? Are his people, you know, his, do, do your neighbors know you? Do you know your neighbors? Do they know that you serve a God who can do far more for them than they could possibly ask or imagine? Do they know that? If they don't, let me invite you today to tune in to the light of Christ, to allow Jesus to come in and illuminate your life so that you can be bold enough, brass enough to go and tell your neighbors that, listen, I have met Jesus and I want to introduce you to him. You see, when the light of Christ is within us, there is nothing that we wouldn't do for Christ. So are you letting your light shine today? Are you being the light that God has called you to be? Stop hiding your light under a bushel, man, and be the light. Because we need to be light in today's society. Look at what is happening around us. There's a lot of people out there who are in despair, and they need to know that there is a God. So today, in the sound of my voice, if you're tired of being mediocre, 
for Christ. If you are tired of not letting your light shine, if you are tired of just being you, and you want to be illuminated with the light of Christ, I'm going to ask you to stand as we sing the last hymn. Dear Father, your children have accepted that you are the light that we need to shine in the world. I pray, dear God, that you take care of their fears as they prepare to show this light to the world. I pray, dear Father, that you take care of that which intimidates them as they let the light shine in the world. And Father, we have a community in Plumstead. We have our neighbors. I pray, dear Lord, that they will see the light before we even speak of the light. So, Lord, help us to let Christ shine in our hearts. Lord, help us for, to let Christ shine in our homes. Father, help us to let Christ shine in our community. And as we journey to heaven, dear Lord, I pray that you, you will shine even in this church. And now to you only, Father, who is able to keep us from falling. It's hard to stay up, Father. To you only who is able to present us faultless as if we have no fault. To you alone. Who is worthy to be praised for glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen and amen. Dispense us, Lord, with blessings we pray, as from thy worship.
please be seated. As you've been led out, we'll sing number 511. I know whom I have believed with 511. <laughs> Just when I need it. 